In this screencast, I would like to show the functionality of the probe tracker that is available for all probes. What we're looking at here is a snapshot of the JDBC demo session that is bundled with JProfiler, roughly one minute of recording time. Let's look at the various ways that chronological information is recorded and displayed by the JDBC probe. Here on the timeline view, we can see the various states that the JDBC connections can be in over time right to the point where the snapshot is safe to disk. Now this is very condensed information and we might be looking for more explicit measurements such as are available on the connections view. Here we can see event counts and event durations. However these measurements are aggregated over the entire period of time that data was recorded for the JDBC probe and the same thing holds true for the hotspots view where all these times and event counts are summed up for all hotspot invocations. The telemetry view on the other hand shows information with a time axis such as the number of executed statements per second or the average statement execution time as it develops over time. However what you cannot do is show this graph for a single selected hotspot or a single selected JDBC connection that would be way too much data to record and it would usually not be needed. So that is exactly what the probe tracker is for. Obviously we cannot start tracking something here in the snapshot so let's restart the JDBC demo session as a live session. We'll reuse this window here and we actually have to start database activity to see something. Now we can go to the hotspots view to select the single hotspot for tracking in the probe tracker. We select the desired hotspot and click on the add to tracker toolbar button. And here we get two options, either to track hotspot times or hotspot counts. If we choose hotspot counts, we get a graph that is very similar to the executed statements graph that we saw earlier on in the telemetry view, just for a single selected hotspot and not for all statements grouped together. If, on the other hand, we choose hotspot times, then we get a stacked area graph with all the various time types and we can immediately see that the net I.O. thread state is prevalent and that very little time is actually spent in the runnable thread state. Now let's track JDBC connections. We can track more than one JDBC connection in a single probe tracker feed by holding the control key when selecting them. Then we click on the Add to Tracker toolbar button again and we get two options, Event Durations and Event Counts. Let's choose Event Durations. Here we get a stacked area graph of all the various event types, Statement Execution, Prepared Statement Execution and Batch Execution. Now all the probe tracker feeds that you have added are available in the drop-down list at the top of the view and you can switch between them. They will continue to be recorded until probe recording is stopped or until you remove them from the probe tracker. For automated sessions where you don't use the JProfile GUI, you can also use the trigger actions to start probe tracking or the controller API.